So there are some new SSDs around the block. These here, these are the Solidime P41 Plus and P44 Pro, and they possibly can be the dark horse SSDs on the market. Now, the interesting thing is that these actually aren't new, and you've probably heard about them before, but not in the Solidime form. And just to spoil the conclusion, they're definitely worth checking out. Let's take a look. So first of all, let's talk about Solidime because you might have not heard about this company before. And actually, this is not a new company. Well, it is a new company, but it's actually an old company really under its skin. Solidime was actually born from the Intel SSDs and now it's part of SK Hynix, which is one of the biggest memory chip makers in the world. In fact, it's the second largest. So basically there's some Intel and SK Hynix magic going on, you know, underneath the hood. And one of the first things I want to talk about is the price for these drives because that's impressive. Now I highly recommend you check out the latest pricing in the description below. Perhaps there's some deals or whatever going on, but I'm looking at the one terabyte drive for the P41 Plus, which is $49. And the two terabyte one for this is $99. And then the P44 Pro is $69 and $129 for the two terabyte version. If you haven't checked the prices recently, that's impressive. So let's take a look at the hardware and specifications of the SSDs. Now, both of the SSDs physically have all the chips and NAND and controllers all on one side. That means that you can use them on laptops that require, you know, skinny spacing and can't have chips underneath as well, which is good. Also, the P41 doesn't have a DRAM, but the P44 Pro has a two gigabytes LPDDR4. In essence, the P44 Pro is a high-end Gen 4 NVMe SSD, and the P41 Plus is a mid-range NVMe SSD. So looking at the Solidime P41 Plus and some of the competitors in terms of specs and what do they offer here, right? The P41 comes in 512, gigabytes one and two terabyte models it's gen 4 drive the read speed is up to 4.1 gigabytes that's on the one and two terabyte models the 512 gigabyte ones like always the smaller capacity drives will have a bit slower speeds but the write speed of the two terabyte one is up to 3325 megabytes per second it's got a 400 terabytes written spec for one terabyte drive warranty for five years which is pretty box standard then let's have a look at some of the competitors which would be the kingston nv2 samsung 980 and the western digital sn 570 they are kind of the same mid-range price range even though the samsung 980 and western digital sn 570 are not Gen 4 drives. Look at the price first of all. The NV2 is slightly cheaper and the SN570 is slightly cheaper as well, but the 980 is more expensive. Now look at the read and write speeds. As you can see, NV2, 980 and the SN570, all of them have lower read and write speeds, but that's not all of it. We'll get to the best part when we re talk about performance. The terabytes written spec is slightly higher on the Samsung and uh, Western Digital, but they are slower and Samsung is more expensive as well. And also Kingston NV2 only offers three years of warranty and has a much lower terabytes written spec at 320 terabytes written for one terabyte drive. Let's move on to the Solidime P44 Pro. So the high-end drive now. In terms of models, there's 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabyte models. The read speed is up to seven gigabytes per second. I'm getting slightly more than that. And the write speed is 6,500 megabytes per second. The terabytes written spec is 500 for the five, 112 gigabytes, which is absolutely ridiculous spec for that. The one terabyte drive is 750 terabytes written, which is actually more than what you usually see, like from Western Digital and Samsung, which offers 600. So we have more for the P440 there. Warranty is five years, but look at the price. It's the cheapest compared to the 
SN850X, 980 Pro and the KC3000. Now before we go to the performance, I've got to talk about the actual software that the drive comes with. When you get the Solidime SSDs, I highly recommend you also download their software and the driver. The software also comes with the toolkit, which you can see here. It's called Synergy Toolkit. And when you install this, by the way, you can install this to any of the drives, any of the PCs. You can just download it and install it. It's, it's free because you can actually utilize some of these like tools here for other brand SSDs as well, like seeing some of the real time usage and, you know, dashboard and other things. But with Solidime SSDs, there's a few extra things that you can do here. So as you can see in this PC, which I have down there, I've got two SSDs in there. There's a one Kingston one and the one Solidime one. If we open the Kingston one, you can see, look, you can check all the other ones. There's a fast lane. Obviously this is not available because this is not a Solidime SSD, but you can see some of these things and diagnostics and uh, run diagnostics, for example, and uh, drivers and all the other things that you can get. But with the Solidime SSD, you get something called here the driver. Now, when I plug the P41 in for the first time, I actually updated the firmware and the driver as well. With the Synergy driver for the Solidime SSDs, you can get up to 120% faster random read speeds and up to 20% faster random write speeds if you didn't have the driver installed. So basically they're saying, look, the driver is already fast, but install the driver and then we're going to do special magic for you. And they call it fast lane there. This will work on the P41 plus. I don't think you have the fast lane for the P44 Pro because it's already quite fast enough, but you can just update the driver very easily over there, run diagnostics, securely erase it if you wanted to. And then on the P41, you can see there's a fast lane tick there, as you can see from this B-roll, and then you can flick it on and off once your driver is installed, but always just leave it on, okay? You can see the estimated life remaining, as well as the drive temperatures and real-time usages and all that. Now, first of all, I wanted to test if the before driver and after driver kind of speed test works in here. And I saw some interesting results, actually. What you can see here is on the left side, you can see before the driver updated. On the right side, you can see after I install the driver, after you have to restart the PC as well. But I can see a much faster sequential read speeds as well, actually. Sorry, write speeds. That is a 500 megabytes higher, as you can see there. Sequential 128K is 2900 megabytes instead of 2400 megabytes. And uh, the other bits look very much the same, but the actual write random 4K is about 47 megabytes faster which is close to 20% faster on the write speeds. Just to comment why my random read speeds aren't actually higher with this Synergy software here, it's because my drive is actually completely fresh installed and it's completely empty. The Synergy boost with the driver actually only kicks in when the drive is at least 50% full. So then you will actually see performance boost there, but that's why I don't see a boost here just because my drive is empty, if that makes sense. So the driver does improve the speed of the drive, but most people and most marketing talks about the sequential read and write speeds, right? We see 7,000 megabytes per second, but actually that's a speed and actually a spec that often is a big hype, right? It's very rarely that you actually use that type of spec of the SSD. Often when you're copying drives, something else will be the bottleneck, not the sequential read and write speeds, right? but the random read and write speeds are the most important speed, especially if you're a creator. Let's say you're editing photos or video or wh whatever you're doing, right? As a creator, working around with your files, you've got all sorts of files stored on your SSD. And think of this as a big, big, big warehouse where everything is stored, right? And then let's say you've got a warehouse full of stuff and then someone's saying, where is the water bottle? and then suddenly someone has to go and find it or get it from somewhere. There are random places all over the place. Get me five different water bottles. Then, you know, these workers will go and try to find it. And the fastest ones are the fastest SSDs, right? But the random is the one that is actually important because that's what makes your program snappy, the, the operating system to load faster. That makes it faster because you have to get something from random places all at the same time, rather than just unloading a big bunch of whatever stock from one shelf. 
in the warehouse. Does that make sense? So the random read and write speeds are the ones where we're writing lots of things randomly all over the warehouse or then reading, okay, where are they all around the warehouse? Just a simple way to understand the random read and write speeds. So now when we are looking at the random read and write speeds, you can see that we are 317 megabytes per second there for the P41 drive. And you're thinking, okay, but only 300 megabytes per second, right? What, what we're talking about here. I'm not sure if you remember, and I hope Solid Dime is not gonna take this part out from the video, but I reviewed the Samsung 990 Pro. Remember, this is like so much more expensive, right? We're talking about the very top end uh, Gen 4 drives, and then the P41 here on the lower end drives. And then as you can see what you can see on the screen, the write random 4K is actually faster on this P41 Plus than we have on the Samsung 990 Pro. And even the read speed is faster on this one than on the 990 Pro, which is ridiculous. Now we can look up the SN850X read random read and write speeds and um, KC3000 random read and write speeds, which are found online as you can see on the screen. You can see both of them have the random read and write speeds slower than the P41 Plus, which is the mid-range Gen 4 NVMe drive. Now the P44 Pro takes it even a notch higher at 340 uh, megabytes per second and 73 at the random 4K, which is even faster. But these are some super impressive benchmarks. Now, I'm actually running these drives through the PC Mark 10 uh, SSD benchmarks as well and collecting some of the data. So if you want to see some of the more comprehensive benchmarks later on in a future video, then hit subscribe. They're coming out and featured in uh, later videos as well. Then we can see that the P41 Plus is 4,141 megabytes per second, which is actually a little bit higher than the advertised. And the write speed is 2,951 megabytes per second, which is slightly slower than the two terabyte model, but still very, very fast speeds. That's impressive, especially when you think about the price point. But now the P44 Pro, which is a little bit of a upgrade to the P41 Plus. We have DRAM cache there. It's it's higher drive, right? We can see that the read speeds are up to 7.1 gigabytes per second. So we're right up there with all of the competitors. And the write speed is 6,600 megabytes per second. Th th these are just like, crazy numbers. I know we're getting so used to them, but we're so used to benchmarks that we can't actually utilize in our everyday workflow, just to underline that one more time, because these numbers are crazy. So the performance in terms of sequential read and write speeds is good, but the random read and write speeds is what matters here. Now, once you've seen the performance of these drives and the price of these, you can see that they are very, very interesting drives. Especially when we're looking at these drives from a creator's point of view, right? We want high terabytes written spec and good warranty, five years, plus a little bit higher than what we see from the competitors. Like the mid-range one here, we see 400 terabytes written, which compared to NV2 from Kingston is 80 terabytes higher. And on the P44 Pro, we see 750 terabytes written for the one terabyte model, which is 150 higher than what we see from Western Digital SN850X, which is much more expensive as well, and the Samsung 990 or 980 Pro, both of them lower terabytes written spec. So if you're a creator and you're writing loads of large files on it, the P44 Pro is the drive to get. But both of these drives are actually the drives to get. I'd get this for the operating drive and then this one for the, you know, your project drives perhaps or something that has more intensive workload for there. If you're working with large photos or large video editing or reading large files back, for example, video editing, you might do actually, depending on your um, bit rate of your video files, you might need to read a lot of files back, especially working with multicams and so on. Then the Solidime drives are absolutely amazing. The price difference between them isn't that big, but the performance of this one is quite a bit bigger. I don't know which one to recommend. I, I kind of think, okay, this is awesome for the price point. This is even more awesome for slightly more. So you decide which one you want to get. There's links in the description below. So when are you looking for an OS drive, project drive, cache drive? These drives are definitely worth checking out, especially at this price range, what we see right now. The only downside, what I can think about these drives or what I can find is that they don't have a four terabyte model because some of the creators perhaps want even more than two terabytes. 
that's the maximum capacity that we have in there. And that's it. But if you are wondering how to build the best bank for buck, create a PC, and perhaps use these drives in your PC for those builds, then check out the builds guides in the description below. They're completely free. I've created them. They're the latest guides there to get the latest best bank for buck creators. Whatever your price range is, there's a video for you down there. Click on the one that's closest to your budget and then just follow the video there. I'll upgrade and downgrade all. I'll explain everything down there. And also, I want to mention here about this sponsorship a little bit, which is interesting. At first, Solidarium wanted to get uh, integration into uh, another video. And then when I started looking into the company a little bit and uh, looking at the specs of the drive and looking at what they actually offer, I thought, goodness me, that's, that's too good to just have on, um, you know, a segment. So I said, can I just have a dedicated video instead? We'll, we'll charge, charge the same amount, but I want to do a dedicated video because they look seriously impressive drives, especially now knowing that they are actually SK Hynix and Intel underneath, but rebranded into a new startup really from Solidime, which is interesting. Anyway, thanks Solidime for sponsoring this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.